Betty? No, no, I can nip it in a bit more yet. <laughs> no! Oh, oh. <sighs> what is it? 77. <laughs> Ooh, doesn't it sound a lot in metric? Yes. <laughs> well, you put on four whatever they are. Centipedes, Miss Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Putting more of them on. Of course, it's all the government's fault. How do you work that out? Well, it's the sugar shortage. I've stocked up so much, if I don't keep eating it, I'll never get rid of it. <laughs> but if you keep on like that, you'll be too fat to get into your store cupboard. I wish I could put on weight. I can't understand it, you know. I have a big meal every night. I don't know how you can afford it. I can't. I have to keep going out with these fellas I don't like just to keep body and soul together. Oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, it's easy. I wear a low frock. They have a good look and I have a good look. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but nowadays they expect something afterwards, don't they? Yes, but they don't get it. Well, why do they keep asking you out, then? Well, it's rather like a fruit machine. Once they've made the investment, they keep hoping they're going to get the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to pull the handle a lot of times before they got my cherries up. <laughs> Very much, sir. And if the socks aren't satisfactory, don't hesitate to bring them back. Thank you so much. <laughs> it won't make a bit of difference. <laughs> anyway, the meal cost seven quid. And I'd borrowed this car to take her home so as to be sure of a quick cuddle. And what happened? About half a mile from her house, she gets her door key out and starts feeling for the passenger door handle. Ooh, you mean she was keen to make a night of it? No, she was keen to make a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I borrowed the car again tonight to take her out again. What makes you think you'll do any better tonight? I've unscrewed the door handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the return of the romantic age, when one's heart leapt at the sight of an ankle slipping into a handsome cab. <laughs> now it's clunk, click, strip off quick. <laughs> Where is Mr Granger? Uh, he hasn't returned from his tea break yet, Captain Peacock. I see. Tell him I wish to see him, will you, as soon as he returns? Certainly, Captain Peacock. Ah, Mr. Granger, Captain Peacock was just asking for you, but I told him you hadn't come back for your tea break yet, and he said he wanted to have a word with you as soon as you returned. Oh, I see. Right. Oh, uh, uh, will you take over from me, Mr. Humphreys? I, I'm going to have a word with Captain Peacock. Certainly, Mr. Granger. Shall I take over from you, Mr. Humphreys? Get stuff, Mr. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, wanted to have a word with me, Stephen? Uh, yes, Mr. Granger. It's... Uh... Ten past eleven. You've had twenty minutes for your coffee break. Your entitlement is fifteen. How do you account for this? I spent a few minutes in the boys' room on my way back. <laughs> That's not part of your coffee break. It's the result of it. <laughs> Five whole minutes. There was a queue. I don't think Mr. Rumble will regard that as an adequate excuse. You don't mean that you're going to report me, Stephen? Yes, I am, Mr. Granger. Very well, old Captain Peacock. I'm sorry, but it's my job. You mean to be a sneak? <laughs> it's not easy for me, you know. On the one hand, we have our friendship, and on the other, I have my job to do. Now I have to wear two hats. Well, you will find no difficulty in that. You're two-faced. <laughs> did you hear that, Mr. Humphreys? I did, Mr. Granger. Sit here. A glass of water for Mr. Granger. <laughs> Don't let him drink it all at once. He'll need another five minutes off. Thank you so much, Mr. Good morning. Come on, Miss Brahms. Uh, before you go to lunch, Mrs. Slocum, I want a word with the floor personnel by the centre stair. Well, I hope it's important, cos I'm dying for me lunch. Miss Brahms, everything I have to say is important. <laughs> Pompous nit. Miss <laughs> Brahms, you mustn't use language like that about floor personnel in my hearing. You'll get ladies' underwear a bad name. <laughs> I want a word with the floor personnel before you all go to lunch. Well, I hope it won't take long. Otherwise, Mr. Herbert of Hardware will have pinched my seat. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. <laughs> Do you need me? Yes, juniors as well. <laughs> now, this, uh, this won't take a moment. From the DM stroke CR to FW stroke LNGD stroke SP, re T. Captain Peacock? What language are you speaking? <laughs> it simply means, Mrs. Slocum, 
from the DM stroke CR, the departmental manager stroke Cuthbert Rumbold, to FW stroke LNGD stroke SP, to Floor Walker stroke, ladies and gentlemen's department, stroke Stephen Peacock, regarding T. What does T stand for? <laughs> it doesn't stand for anything. You drink it. <laughs> T-E-A, T. They use these initials to save time. Doesn't seem to be working very well, does it? <laughs> would if people didn't keep asking questions. Well, people wouldn't need to if they knew what you were rabbiting on about. <laughs> if I may be allowed to continue, Mrs Slocum. Oh, yes, PCO. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Please carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where was I? You just got to the bit where you were stroking Cuthbert Rumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I see you are... Oh, you're not starting on those initials again. <laughs> Please, Mrs Slocum. I see you are concerned about excessively long tea breaks being enjoyed by members of the department under your supervision. I must emphasize that the said breaks are limited to 15 minutes, and to ensure no one takes advantage of this arrangement, personnel will be required in future to enter their departure and arrival in a book to be known as the E, <laughs> L, and T, B book. <laughs> the Levens's Lunch and Tea Break Book. <laughs> Visits to the toilet will also be recorded, to which I have provided a separate book. To be known as the WC book. <laughs> it's an outrage. Absolutely. Do you mean we have to clock on and clock off every time we want a cup of coffee? That is precisely the idea. And every time I want to powder my nose, I've got to stick it into a book first. That is correct. But what if it's an emergency and my biro's run out? Get someone else to do it for you. It's not the same as doing it yourself. <laughs> Get someone else to sign the book. It's an intolerable invasion of privacy. 1984, Big Brother is watching you. They won't be watching as well. <laughs> I only have to add that this comes into effect immediately, so I hope you'll all be ready to sign the book back here, sharp at two. Hey, hang on, just a minute. We, we've spent five minutes waiting, listening to you. Do we get another five minutes longer? The customers will be coming in. They will require to be attended to. What about our five minutes? Miss Brahms, if you add up all the odd minutes you have taken on top of your normal breaks, I think the five minutes are more than due to Grace Brothers. Six minutes. <laughs> I suggest that the whole matter should be discussed over lunch. Yes, let's have a disgusting lunch. <laughs> Fred, who's for cocky leaky? <laughs> Dumplings? Coles <laughs> to Newcastle? <laughs> who's the grapefruit cocktail? Mine? Where's the cherry? I ate it. You're supposed to be on a diet. <laughs> I'll thank you to let me make my own sacrifices. One open sandwich! I did not ask for an open sandwich. No, I'm sorry, Mr Granger, but somebody nudged me in the queue and the top fell off. <laughs> I'll go back and get it if you want it. I think it fell butter up. Don't bother. You're being brave having a seafood salad. Oh, shellfish. That's supposed to make you virile. <laughs> well, I don't think a couple of mussels and a shriveled up prawn is going to do much for my performance tonight. <laughs> Why? What are you doing? He's got a date with a lady escapologist. <laughs> He's taking the handle off the car door so that he can bend her to his will. I always carry a tin opener. <laughs> Doesn't that take a long time? No, I'd jab him in the hands with it. <laughs> Mr Granger's still got the scars. <laughs> Could we tear ourselves away from sex for one moment to discuss this clocking in business? Well, I think it was quite humiliating, Mr. Granger, the way you were told off in front of us. Don't you, Mr. Lucas? Oh, I do, Mr. Humphreys. I very nearly went over to Captain Peacock to say something really sharp and witty to cut him down to size. Why didn't you? I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, I don't think you and Mr Granger should put up with it. It's not just us, you know. I, I hope I'm unanimous in this. Yes, if both you and Mr Granger refuse to sign, the management will have to do something about it. Yeah, sack him. 
I agree with Mrs. Slocum. I think we should all refuse to sign. I agree. And I think you two should refuse to sign first. <laughs> no, we must all not sign together. United we stand, divided we fall. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> Stranger. Yes, Captain Peacock. Will you come here a moment, please? We're all behind you. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Granger, return from lunch, 14.03. Would you sign, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain Peacock, but I must refuse to sign your book. I will ask you once more, Mr. Granger. Mr. Granger, return from lunch, 1404. <laughs> Will you sign, please? Again, I shall refuse. I see. Mr. Granger, refused, point blank to sign book. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Granger, I shall now report your action to Mr. Rumbo. But, Captain Peacock, all the others refused to sign as well. On the contrary, Mr. Granger, I only asked you, you refused, and you will be reported. <laughs> That's a brandy for Mr. Granger. Well done, Mr. Granger, the way you stood up to him. Oh, we shall always remember you for that, Mr. Granger, when you've gone. <laughs> But I thought that uh, we were all going to stand up to him. I only hope I'll be as brave as that when my turn comes. <laughs> well, I think you all ought to sign something to say that you won't sign it. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr Granger, we're all behind you. Oh, yes, we're all in this together. Uh, only you're in it a bit deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Men's wear. Yeah. Yes, Mr Granger is here. I see. <laughs> Mr. Granger wanted in Mr. Rumbold's office immediately. Good luck, Mr. Granger. And remember, we're all behind you. I, I think we should all go together. He only said for the ringleader. <laughs> well, I'm not the ringleader. I just happen to be the first one out of the lift. <laughs> Men's well. Yes. Yeah, yes, he's on his way. <laughs> Rumbold's furious. You're keeping him waiting. You'd better hurry up, Mr. Granger. You don't want to get a reputation for always being late. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will all back me up, won't you? If you don't look sharp, you won't be here for us to back up. <laughs> you know, I think you went too far defying Captain Peacock like you did. Well, we did all agree not to sign together. Well, of course, we wouldn't have signed the first time he asked us, as a protest, but we would have done the second time. Mm, I think he went too far. Mind you, I'm still behind him. Oh, yes, well, we're all behind him. Uh -oh. Only not so close. <laughs> <laughs> have your notepad ready, Miss Ainsworth. I shall expect a verbatim report of everything that is said at this meeting. Come in. I believe you wanted a word with me, Mr. Rumble. I've been waiting five minutes to have a word with you, Mr. Granger. I, I came as quickly as I could. Do you recognise this book? Y yes, I think so. <laughs> Take everything down, Miss Ainsworth. I've taken everything down. Knock, knock, come in. I believe you wanted to have a word with me, Mr. Rumbold. I've been waiting five minutes to have a word with you, Mr. Granger. I came as quickly as I could. Do you recognise this book? Yes, I think so. Take everything down, Miss Ainsworth. I've taken everything down. <laughs> Don't put down what you say. Yes, sir. Shall I put that down? No. <laughs> Let's start again. Knock, knock. Come in. Please! <laughs> Miss Ainsworth, be quiet. <clears throat> now, Mr Granger, do you admit that you refused to sign this book? We all refused. I'm afraid that's not true. I only asked Mr Granger. But they were all behind me. I see. Led by you. I'm afraid, Peacock, it seems clear we must make an example in this case. I'm afraid so. One rotten apple can spoil the whole barrel. <laughs> I would like to say, Mr Granger's defence, that he has never been a rotten apple. 
Thank you, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Until today. <laughs> come in. I'm in. <laughs> I wish you'd wait until I say come in before you come in. I'm having an important meeting here. Shall I go out again, then? No, no, no. Put it down. Shall I put that down? No, I don't want that put down. <laughs> <laughs> what shall I do with it, then? Put it down. I thought you said don't put it down. <laughs> I don't want you to put down, put it down. Well, I'm going to put it down. And as far as I'm concerned, you can stick it up. <laughs> Don't put that down, Miss Hainsworth. <laughs> uh, now, where were we? Never been a rotten apple in the barrel until today. Yes, <clears throat> Mr. Granger. For the four minutes unauthorised absence, I am deducting 25 pence from your pay packet, plus a further 25 pence for refusing to sign this book. Could I sign now and save the 25 pence? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Captain Peacock's remarks take up the place where you were supposed to sign. That is all, Mr. Granger. The matter is closed. Uh, what, what about the others? That is all, Mr. Granger. The matter is closed. Well, I think it's disgraceful. You having to pay 50p. I shouldn't stand for it. No, you should stand up for yourself and tell them where to get off. Yeah, we're behind you. I prefer to forget it. It's all been most unpleasant. Well, I think we all ought to chip in and pay Mr. Granger's fine. I mean, after all, it's only 10p each. Ah, but he was fined 25p for being late and 25p for not signing. Now, we're only supporting him for not signing, so we should only pay half. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Now, there's a principle involved here, isn't it? Brother Granger is being victimised because he stood up for his rightful rights. Now, it's only fair that we should stand up for him. This has nothing to do with you, Mr. Mash. Get back to your basement. It has everything to do with me, Brother Slocum. <laughs> I am shop steward, and in that capacity, I am convening an emergency meeting in accordance with Section 23 of the rule book. Can we do that? Of course we can. But what about the customers? You'll have to wait. It all comes to a halt when the brothers say so. Well, it's just like the Mafia. And the... <laughs> and the cosy nostril. Are you free, Mr Granger? Come in, Captain Peacock. Don't move, brother. You'll be Captain Peacock once... He you. can't touch us once I've convened an emergency meeting. We are sacrosanct. Is that true? That is true, brother. <laughs> brother Humphreys. Oh, doesn't it bring you close when you have a union? <laughs> I called you, Mr Granger. I've been convened. <laughs> Get off the floor, Mash. Unless you want everybody out from here to Harrods, I would not use that tone of voice, Peacock. <laughs> now then, we are gathered here today, brothers, to consider the case of Brother E. Granger. <laughs> so you're behind this, Granger? No, 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 we're all behind it. <laughs> now, as I see it, we've got two things to decide. What we want and how we are going to get it. But I'm not sure what we want. Ah, well, you're lucky you got me here, then, you? <laughs> Firstly, we want to remove the stigmata attached to Brother Granger. Oh, it sounds like the exorcist. And secondly, <laughs> and secondly, on the time element, we want to be free and unrestricted in the cloakroom. I'll second that. <laughs> and thirdly, we want a reappraisal of the whole archaic coffee break system, bringing it into line with current industrial practice. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means, brother, that unless the management meet our demands, we take action. And if that don't work, we'll escalate. Hear him. Oh, no, you've wasted enough time, Mash. Everybody back to work. You're out of order, brother Peacock, and I do not want to have to reprimand you again, all right? <laughs> right. Now then, as I see it, the main point to hold out for is travelling time to and from the tea breaks, right? Your tea should start not when you leave here, not when you get in the lift. Not when you stand in the queue at the counter. Not even when you pay for it. Your tea should start when you sit down and actually dip your biscuit in the cup. <laughs> oh, doesn't he speak well? Thank you, brother. I'm now about to put a motion on the table. Some of the phrases are strange. <laughs> Now, I move that this meeting authorises me to put our demands before the management and the former strike committee with carte blanche to take industrial action. Hands up, all those for the motion. Surely good. All those against? 
<laughs> you can't vote, you've got no standing. I'm a member of the union. Where's your card? I left it at home. It makes you out of order then, doesn't it? Have they got their cards? That's beside the point. I vote, we all show cards. You can't vote, we all show cards unless you show your card. <laughs> Carried unanimously. <laughs> I can tell you now, Mash, there is positively no chance of us at Grace Brothers acceding to your demands. I see. Is that your final word, sir? Absolutely. The management stands firm behind its agreement of 1928. <laughs> Are you saying, sir, that henceforth there is no point in us having meaningful discussions and the helpful exchange of views, then? None whatever. Then get stuck! <laughs> Don't put that down, Miss Ainsworth. <laughs> That's it then, brothers. As from this moment in time, it's go slow. But it's only three minutes before we go home. <laughs> That's all right. Go slow right up to the bell. Well, that's not going to be easy without any customers. <laughs> in my official capacity as shop steward Peacock, I'm ordering you to go slow. <laughs> oh, that, Mrs Slocum. As from now on, it's go slow. But if I don't get these covers on quick, I'll miss me boss. Well, leave them. But my undies will get all smutty. <laughs> so let them get smutty. I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> and I can't sell smutty underwear. So the management, through their intractable attitude, will lose money. And I lose me commission. We've all got to make sacrifices, brother. Not when I'm saving for me holidays, we do. <laughs> don't forget, brothers. When you arrive in the morning, it's go slow. I, I don't like this union thing at all. It seems to be going too far. Well, you started it, brother. <laughs> Tell you, brothers, I'm really proud of you. The go slow this morning was 100% effective. I think we put the wind up to management, all right? And if you don't go slow on that apple crumble, you'll get the wind up somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr Granger went slow beautifully. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> well, I know we're all behind the union, Mr Humphreys, but I must say that I do think ten minutes is rather a long time to spend on an inside leg. <laughs> Especially as the customer only came in for a pair of gloves. <laughs> well, my end has been disaster. Your end always was. <laughs> Mr Lucas, if we weren't supposed to be united in a common cause, I would bat your ear old. <laughs> I had this Russian lady athlete in this morning. I took so long fitting her for a bra, she left me her address in Vladivostok. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, it hasn't been a success, has it? I don't think Peacock even noticed. In that case, we'll have to escalate. How? Oh. Well, one of the ways of bringing our grievances to the attention of the hierarchy is to bung up the loose with plaster of Paris. <laughs> Wouldn't they rather be cutting off our noses to spate our faces? <laughs> well, then we can go lightning. What's that? You drop everything without warning. <laughs> oh, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> you seem to be getting so militant and extremist. Yes, I can almost spell reds under the beds. There are no reds under my bed, Mr Granger. <laughs> no, no, mine. Mind you, I look every night. <laughs> Yeah, I've got it. We'll hijack the lift and keep Rumbold inside with us until the management accede to our demands. Miss Brahms and I refuse to be cooped up in the lift for days with half a dozen men. Except as a last resort. <laughs> it might be your last chance. I mean, our last chance, I'm sorry. Uh, brothers, brothers, there's only one thing for it. Bung up the loose, followed by a lightning sitting. What? In the loose? No, on the floor. And if that don't work, it's a walkout and pickets. 
I have been here for over 30 years and I've refused to pick it. <laughs> We're only doing it for you. What? Yes, if you hadn't been so insufferably rude to Captain Peacock, we wouldn't be in this mess. Right. I think we ought to vote on it. No vote needed. You give me carte blanche by a democratic majority. Come on in. Let's get down to the shop floor and confront the management. I haven't finished my coffee yet. <sighs> well, come on, then. <laughs> oh, it really is too bad. It's four minutes past two. So all the old values are disappearing, you know. Is this what we fought for at Dunkirk? <laughs> Were you at Dunkirk? No, but <laughs> I just wondered if this is what the people who were at Dunkirk fought for. We don't have anybody who fought at Dunkirk, do we? Never mind. <laughs> ah, here they are. As democratically elected spokesman, I have to tell you that unless the management meets our demands, we are all out. The management will not negotiate under intimidation. I'm not intimidating you, mate. If I was intimidating you, you'd get a bunch of fives right up your rooter. <laughs> Don't let me lose my temper, Captain Peacock. No, no, please carry on, sir. I'm like a wild animal when I'm roused. <laughs> Did you hear that? He threatened me. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> I've got a copy of your memo, Rumbold. Uh, uh, about the tea break? Uh, yes, well, <coughs> further to that, sir, the uh, <coughs> workers are claiming that their tea break shouldn't commence until they actually get the coffee in their hands. Yeah, we'll get it and all. We're right behind Mr Granger in this, sir. If it wasn't just me, sir. Mm. Yeah. We are not travelling up and down in your rotten old lift to your rotten old canteen in our own time, sir. That, that's quite right. The lifts are not up to it. <laughs> My tea break begins when my tea is handed to me. And what's good enough for me is good enough for you. That's it, brothers. We've won. That's the power of the union. Well, I, I'm very glad I held out. <laughs> well done, Mr Granger. It's... We were all behind you. <laughs> so, in future, your tea will be handed to you. Goddard. <laughs> so now you, you won't have to leave the department at all. Cut <laughs> on everybody, you've all done very well. <laughs> oh, paper cups. And you know, I always rather enjoyed my walk to the canteen. Yes, and uh, I enjoyed my ride up in the lift. I shan't see my friend behind the counter. <laughs> Never mind, brothers. We've won a great victory and lost our tea break. Mr. Mash. Captain Peacock, 